It's been a few months since I've gone over my stock portfolio and I have made some significant changes since. So today I wanted to go over the top 10 holdings in my portfolio, just to give you guys an idea of what someone like me is investing in. So jumping into my portfolio here, I'm currently at just over 50,000 for the total account value. And because the market has been rallying this year, my returns have been pretty significant as well. As you can see, my year-to-date return is right at about 17% or $7,000, which is actually right about where the S&P 500 return is. So my year-to-date return is actually a little bit lower than where I'd want it to be. So the goal is to try and beat the S&P 500 by at least a few percentage points every year, which as we know can be pretty difficult, but it can be done if you're able to manage your portfolio in the right ways and invest in the right stocks. So I will be updating you guys every few months or so, and hopefully we can outperform the S&P 500 on a consistent basis. And just by the way, I don't do much trading. Maybe every so often I'll do a quick swing trade on a stock that I believe is extremely undervalued. But for the most part, I'm only buying and holding for the long term. I definitely don't dabble at all in options trading. So jumping into the holdings, the very first and most weighted is Apple. And for those of you who have been following my account, I finally drank the Kool-Aid and made Apple and Microsoft the top two holdings in my portfolio. I had gone a long time without these two companies in my portfolio because I was honestly kind of stubborn about it and thought that the stocks and companies that I was investing in would outperform them and that ended up not being the case. These are two of the biggest and most valuable companies in the world that even though they're multiple trillion dollar companies are still continuing to scale and increase their revenue streams and continue to dominate the markets that they're in. And I believe these two companies will continue to grow for at least the next five to 10 years and they have had a lot of momentum these past few years as well. So Apple makes up about 11% of my portfolio and Microsoft makes up another almost 10%. So together they're about 20% of the portfolio and I'm planning on bumping that up to about 30% within the next few months here. Number three is Costco at 7.7% .7 of the portfolio. And Costco, in my opinion, is one of the greatest consumer services companies in the world. It's got an extremely wide economic moat, strong customer loyalty, great management, and every time I go into a Costco store, it seems to just be crazy busy no matter what time of day it is. It tends to have really anything you need, especially for people who are big spenders and spend a lot on groceries anyway. So it's a company that I really believe in, and as Warren Buffett says, when a great company performs well, so will its stock. Currently up about 12.2% on Costco, or about a $400 return. Number four is Qantas Services, and this stock, even though it falls under the energy sector, has had massive returns this year, similar to tech stocks. It's up about 37.2% year to date, making my return at about 31%, or just under a $700 gain. And this company is an energy powerhouse that I believe will continue its consistent growth going forward into the next few years. So Quanta Services, or PWR, is 6.3% of my portfolio, with about $3,000 invested. The next one is an ETF called SCHG. This is the Schwab Large Cap Growth Fund, and it's about 5% of the portfolio. So this ETF consists of some of the biggest companies in the world that have grown significantly for the past five to 10 years and continue to perform year over year. If we scroll down to its top holdings, we can see that some of those large cap tech stocks make up a huge percentage of the portfolio that drives that growth super high during bull runs. And this ETF is up about 37%, with my return being about 19%. Number seven is Syntus, which makes up about 4% of the portfolio. And this is a company that provides cleaning supplies and uniforms for typically blue collar workers and shops throughout the United States. And I actually found out about this company years ago when I was working in a shop at a car dealership, and I've just been hooked ever since. It's another one of those great companies that has a monopoly-like structure and continues to dominate in its market, so I plan on holding this stock for the long term. Number eight is Arthur J. Gallagher, or AJG. This is an insurance company that makes up about 3.3% of my portfolio. This is another one that I've been holding for a few years now, and it's been performing consistently well ever since. If we look at its returns from the past five years, it's just been crushing it year over year with those consistent gains. And even in 2022, when the entire market was selling off, this stock held pretty strong and only fell a few percentage points. Another thing kind of worth noting here too is that if we compare it to the Progressive Group stock, or PGR, which is a very similar company, we can see that Arthur J. Gallagher has outperformed Progressive pretty significantly over the five year period. So I'm planning on holding onto this stock for the next few years going forward, but still deciding on whether or not I'll keep buying and adding more to the position or not. 
These last two are both tech ETFs. Number nine is QLD, which is essentially the QQQ, but 2X leveraged, meaning whatever the QQQ returns, this ETF will return double, whether it be positive or negative. So in 2022, when the QQQ was down 30% at one point, this ETF was down 60%. But now that the markets have recovered quite a bit this year, it's up 90% year to date, so needless to say, it's extremely volatile, which is why I won't ever have more than about 5% of the portfolio in this ETF, not to mention the expense ratio is fairly high as well at just under 1%. I'm up on this position about 53%, and I only really try to buy shares of this fund when the market is really low, so I haven't bought into this fund for months, but maybe if there's a major pullback, I'll scoop up a few more shares. Moving on to number 10, it's XLK, which is the technology sector ETF, and it makes up about 3.4% of the portfolio. And in my opinion, this is one of the best growth ETFs around. It's outperformed really any growth or tech ETF out there. But the reason for this is because Apple and Microsoft make up a huge chunk of its holdings. As you can see here, they make up just under 50% of the portfolio. And since these two stocks are up over 40% this year, the ETF is up nearly 40% as well. So that kind of begs the question of, do you buy into this ETF on a consistent basis? or do you just dollar cost average into Apple and Microsoft since they're both heavily weighted in XLK anyway? And that's of course up to you as the investor to decide what you'd rather do if you're focused on investing in growth and tech. So those are my top 10 holdings in my stock portfolio. I obviously have a lot more positions. There's at least like 30 more but they're all about 2% of the portfolio or less. As always guys, these are not stock recommendations. It's just a few stocks that I'm currently investing in. And if you enjoy videos like this, just let me know by putting a like on this video and I'll see you guys next time.